Hi, welcome to my podcast, Talking Travel with Wendy. I travel the globe interviewing really cool people in small hospitality and tourism businesses. Join me each week as I discover and share something or someone new with you. You can find more at www.travelwithwendy.net. And remember, it's always an adventure when you travel with Wendy. Hi, thanks so much for joining us here today with Talking Travel with Wendy. I'm so happy to be here with my great friend, Vicki Cherbach with Travel by Vicki. And today we're going to do traveling during the time of Rona. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you for having me, Wendy. Yeah, this is, a, I think, a great topic that's been on everybody's mind for at least the last seven months. And for the foreseeable future. So there's probably a lot, a lot of questions out there and a lot to cover. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So tell me, what have you been up to lately? Ah, well, um, I have basically restricted my travel to within the United States for now. And a lot of that has to do with the Rona because a lot of the countries have banned us from a coming right. and a lot of countries even when they were allowing us have opened and shut their borders on a regular basis so i've like probably a lot of us residents have limited my travel to the united states sure. um, so I, I live outside of the dc area so i've been doing a lot of local travel mm -hmm. and staycations Yep, staycations. Yep. There's nothing wrong with investigating your own backyard. That's right. I can't even tell you how many people said to me recently, that's there? I didn't know that was there. I've lived here for 20 years. <laughs> yeah. It's true. People just get comfortable in their you know, own home space, and they don't even investigate yeah. things that are right outside. They're them. just going back and forth to work, and they've got other stuff on their mind, <laughs> and they didn't realize there's a botanical garden to the left that's like world right, that's own. amazing and open <laughs> and outdoors right <laughs> but yeah so just the dc area i have been to uh chincoteague island yeah. a few times and to seattle and that's how far is chincoteague from um northern virginia well from where i live it really depends on traffic and you know that's pretty dicey yeah. in the dc area so you can it can be anywhere from three hours to three days to okay. get there like <laughs> Okay, yeah. Gonna what kind of accommodations? They have quite a few hotels and motels in the town because it is a pretty big tourist destination. And in a typical year in July, they always do the pony swim, mm -hmm. which attracts people from around the world. I've met people here. I've been to the pony swim at, here in Chincoteague, and I've met people from Sweden who, you know, if, if you've read Misty of Chincoteague, the book, the children's book. Sure. Uh, that the wild horses are still here on Assateague Island and they still do a pony swim every July where they swim the ponies across the water and back and you get to see you know they have a big carnival usually not in 2020 but you know they do a pony auction yes it's always in July and they book out the hotels way in advance and it is a pretty big tourist destination because Assateague Island is a national park okay uh, so the beach it costs to get in or you have to have your park annual park hiking. Uh, there is hiking there, but it's, you know, it's a swampy area. So it's mm. very, it's mosquito laden. So, okay, then <laughs> there are also trails. Yes, there are trails and they're very flat. There's no like mountain hiking, but there's a lighthouse out on Assateague Island. There are the ponies. There's a beautiful beach. And because it is a national park, it's very pristine and, and well kept and stuff. Yes. Um, cool. So, yeah, so there's that. And then the town itself is very picturesque. I think it's kind of cute. It's got some small businesses that could really use some tourists to come okay. in. All right. Help them survive. Yeah. So there's, and then, and there's some things like Ocean City, Maryland is not too far. Rehoboth Beach in Delaware, uh, Fenwick Island. There are quite a few things that are pretty close to Chincoteague. Okay. You trips. Have you been to any of the beaches along the coast, uh, Ocean City, Dewey, Rehoboth? Yes. I've been to Rehoboth and Bethany Beach in Delaware, Ocean City in Maryland. And Are they um, doing okay? Yeah. I mean, it's hard to say because they're like, even here in Chincoteague, a lot of these smaller businesses just chose to stay closed okay. for the season. So it remains to be seen next year whether or not these businesses survive because they just chose that it just didn't make sense for 
you know, the phase one, phase two, and even some phase three uh, okay. to open because they have such a limited season anyway. Yeah. So, yeah, so I can't, I haven't talked to any of the Chamber of Commerce as any of the business towns or in the beach towns. So I really don't know at this point how yeah. they've aired it. So how has it been with booking people? for as a travel advisor, what are some of the challenges or maybe some of the things that were pleasantly surprising while uh, we've been in the season? Because it's been a few months since we've been able to catch up. Yes. (laughs) And for a very long time, travel was at a standstill and rightfully so. We don't need to be spreading this thing around the globe as it already has done without our So taking a break from travel, although it was hard, was the right thing to do. But now that everyone is getting an idea of we're in this for the long haul and we know how it's spread and we can take precautions. I think still, you know, limiting travel to, I don't want to say essential trips only because uh, sometimes a vacation is an essential trip for your mental health. Yeah. It's just um, investigating your location because people and locations and countries are opening and shutting their borders sometimes hour to hour. And so having a travel advisor, in my opinion, and I may be unbiased, is important. (laughs) They are usually going to know if they're doing their job, they're going to know what the countries are requiring to get in, if they're open to visitors, what percentage they're operating at, you know, what's open and what is closed, because that is also changing as people move through the phases. So there's a lot more to consider than just, hey, I found this great resort and a good flight price. And now- Oh, I'm sure. Go. Sure. And it's like and- Baja and, and somewhere else that I saw recently, like the the ticket prices are totally <laughs> discounted. However, to get there is, is kind of crazy right now. Right. It's a challenge. And then, you know, you have to kind of monitor the number of coronavirus cases in the destination because they could flip the switch and you have trouble getting out again. Yeah. Um, Well, and also getting back in. Yeah. Getting out, getting in, all those things come into play. That's something to consider. You want to go to on a trip. Sure, you can get in there. But what if you get quarantined? What if you have to stay 14 days or longer in country? Does your job allow that? Will they make you quarantine when you return home for 14 days? Who has that kind of vacation time or can take that time away from work? So there's a lot to consider, not just, oh, well, it's a great price on, a, on this flight. So you walk people through that, though. You say, hey, listen, let's research this destination Correct. together, and I'll walk you through, like, what are the requirements? A lot of travelers have kind of come into, that's, that's come into play with their trips where they didn't realize they need a rapid COVID test, and their hometown doesn't get a rapid COVID test. They have seven to 10 day turnaround, which is too long. And so people have missed their trips or had to cancel because they just don't have the documentation that's required for where they're headed. And so there's a lot to consider, you know, with yeah. travel these yeah. days, a lot more than in back in the day, I guess yeah. uh, I'll use that catchphrase of the new normal. We're in the new normal of travel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, we're not in the early days of March where they said no travel. We're kind of in that limbo where you can plan travel, but you have to do your research before you go. Make sure you have a mask and hand sanitizer. And we even did a trip recently that we just brought the majority of our food. Like right. we, we were able to travel not too far, three and a half hours away. Um, we stayed at a friend's house who has a lake house there, but there's a ton of Airbnbs. So you can take your food with you and limit the amount of times you're going to a restaurant or maybe stopping at the grocery store because you're schlepping it with you. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So that's, yeah. Spending time outdoors is important. There was pl- there are plenty of do- locations that you can go and spend the majority of your vacation outside. Have you had clients talk about doing some RVing? I can't get over like the RV industry is what increased 60% or something I read. <laughs> you can't find an RV anywhere. People yeah. are <laughs> renting them and buying them at like... <laughs> I don't even know how quickly uh, we we looked into one actually a lot uh, before this all started, and they were at like an eight week backlog. Now it's 10, <laughs> twenty. I mean, some they no one can find them. They're like the hottest commodity on the market right yeah, now. Yeah, we couldn't even find kayaks here. Like right? No, 
<laughs> now, if we could just, I think it would be nice if we could just remember this when the whole coronavirus thing. Yes. When, like, when Rona is over, let's just keep spending time outside people. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's a good thing. So yes, I have not personally dealt with any clients that are doing RV trips, but a lot of the fellow advisors that I know have booked to those trips for clients. And there is a supplier that I work with that will rent RVs. So you don't okay. purchase an RV if you're not really looking to drop that kind of money on a, an RV of your own. So yes. So if anybody is interested in an RV trip and wanted to, wanted to investigate it, they could reach out to me and I could help them with that. Awesome. Perfect. Yeah. And you probably have information on like routes that they could do and how long, yes. like if they wanted yes. five to seven days or seven to 10 days or maybe yep. a month if they need to get away from family. <laughs> <laughs> Which after all the lockdown, some people are ready for that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, yes, yes. There are some of the suppliers that do the rentals of the RV also have uh, pre-made itineraries that you can piece together. They're already done if you want them, you know, completely done for you. If you want to change and mix and match, you can do that too. Yeah, there's a lot of options out there. And, and if it's something that you're, you're interested in or someone you know is interested in, you can reach out to me and I can walk you through how to research it because, or, or at least I can help you book it because it's, um, RVing is not simple. It's, it's not like, oh, I'm just going to get in the, the RV and I'm going to go. You have to right. research which campgrounds are open. If you want to do like glamping where you don't have hookups, that's a different, because there's a whole new uh, a group of people that are doing this. Uh, I can't remember the term and it's escaping me. I'm, I've only had one coffee, so I can't think. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have hookups and you don't have a campground and you can go and park your RV in like a brewery parking lot. Or oh, in, okay. Okay. Like, yeah. And there is a company that allows you to do that and you can do that, but you're, you don't have water hookups. So you can't use your shower and you can't use your heater and your air conditioner and stuff unless you have solar panels or a generator. But a lot of people are, are looking at that because you, you can't, with an increased interest in RVing, a lot of the campgrounds are booked. Yeah, totally. You know, yeah. so it's, it's not super easy to just pick up and go. You have to research it. You have to have someone. Who oh yeah. Either. Our local state park here, Montesano, I did a vlog on them recently and they're booked through Christmas. Right. Which mm -hmm. I'm good for them. I'm glad they're yeah. threatening in this market because I'm sure in years past they weren't booked. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so, okay. Let's shift. How have cruises changed? Okay, so cruises have been a challenge. As you know, the U.S. cruise market is still not sailing, and they just recently ex extended their no-sail date through November 30th. Okay, um, I didn't know are, that. Yeah, they are slowly, luckily, now we're at a point where they're just extending it month by month, Okay. rather than, you know, when this first started, and it was until further notice. I Look, there are some positive trends I see that I think will have us sailing again soon. I don't want to put a date on it because I don't think any of us can predict that, but I can say that Europe has been sailing several cruise lines. MSC has, is one of them. Oh, okay, good. On the waterways has been doing river cruises since July with no reported coronavirus. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, issue. So they have, the cruise lines, I think more so than other resorts were already doing a lot of safety okay. protocols because they had had trouble with norovirus and other things that spread really quickly on a ship. So they've just taken the safety protocols that were already in place and they're right. just implementing them. Yeah, yeah that makes enhanced, sense. Enhance them even more. So I think that you'll see a resurgence of the cruise industry sooner rather than later. And a lot of people are already booking. I mean, you can already book your cruises for 2021 and 2022. So we're, that's Oh, that's good. Good. So again, like making reservations as far out as you possibly can. And then usually like now I know like with Rona again, the cancellation policies are a little bit more flexible. Right. 
And so far, the cruise lines have not changed their flexibility. They're allowing, you know, cancellation right up, almost right up until sale. So, okay. you know, it's some cruise lines are re- requiring a non-refundable deposit, meaning if you do a cancel, you lose like a $200 deposit or 400 Each cruise line is different. And that's another reason to enlist the help of someone who's familiar with the cruise line that you're looking at, because the cancellation may cost you nothing. It may cost you a, a portion of your fee. Mm -hmm. And that's when travel insurance comes into play because you can get travel insurance to cover the non-refundable portion of your cruise. And that's, but that's why people need to use you because you know the difference between those and like what the windows of cancellation are and and how, how far out you can do it to, you know, and without having to research it all yourself. (laughs) Exactly, exactly. And then in the event that you do need to cancel, the advisor is going to be the one that contacts the cruise line. And sometimes those hold times are extremely long right now because people have been canceling and, and ha- you know, having to change. And rebooking their- and stuff. Yes, there's yeah. still a lot of fallout from, you know, this March to October timeframe. So there's yeah. still, it's a crazy time to be in the travel, <laughs> in the travel industry. <laughs> we'll get through this, we will travel again and we will be all the better for it. I know. Looking forward to 2021. Right. Right. It's still easy to cancel and shift and change if you need to, but it gives you a little bit of something to look forward to. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. I mean, you can dream and just, you know, talk with an advisor so you know what your options are. I'm ready for, I'm ready for a good year. (laughs) Yeah. So we're going 2021. We'll be back to normal or at least some semblance of normal. And we're, I'm going to stick with that. I refuse to say anything else. This That's right. <laughs> so Vicki, have you flown recently within the United States? Actually, yes, I have. I just uh, returned October 1st from a uh, trip out to the West Coast um, okay. in the Seattle area for about three weeks. And I flew on an airline that I I felt very comfortable. Everyone wore masks. They made sure that everyone wore their masks and wore them correctly, but there was no trouble. Everyone wore them for the duration of the flight. I would say they kept their middle seats blocked. And even with the middle seats blocked, I would say we were at 30 to 40% uh, capacity. It was not full at all. How was going through security? Security was easy and it wasn't crowded. There's very little social distancing or physical distancing in the TSA area. And it's not anyone's fault. It's just because of the way that it's set up. Like they don't have clear markers saying six feet. So you, it's up to you to space your so. space yourself. Obviously when you travel early in the morning or late at night, you're limp, you know, you're, you're, the airport is less crowded. So that's probably a good time to target if you're looking to avoid people. And I did, we left really early in the morning. And then, you know, on our return flight, it was like a mid afternoon. And you could definitely see the difference. The mid afternoon flight was much more crowded. The airport was much more crowded than, than the early okay. But it still is, is not, it is not at all like it was pre COVID okay. as far as crowds go. And you know, uh, the restaurant, that's another thing to, to know is you want to pack your own food a lot of the times because the airlines, even on a cross country flight are not serving food. They are giving you a snack, a drink still, but the food options are limited. So you will want to have some food and you can't necessarily rely on what's available in the airport. You have to check. Sure. sure. These restaurants are open because not a, not all of them are operating at this time. So you, you know, you, it's still a research thing. You've got to figure out what's available, what's going to be open, when it's going to be open. What do you feel comfortable with as a traveler? Well, that's a great tip. I'm trying to limit the amount of time I have my mask off on the plane. So you want a quick and easy snack that you can hurry up and and eat quickly and then put your mask back on. That's the way I roll. I also travel with wipes. I always wiped, and this was pre-COVID. I always travel with sanitizing wipes and I wipe down the tray tables and the chairs and the seat belts and everything around me. Mm -hmm. And I've always done that. And I still do. And I advise all of my clients to do the same. And yes, bring your hand sanitizer, bring extra masks because it does get, gets pretty warm on the flight. So I try to wear disposable masks on the plane just because they're a little cooler and I oh, that's a good tip. Get rid of them at the end of the flight and not feel bad about it. <laughs> so, right. Please um, throw away. 
Hashtag keep it in the can. Yes. <laughs> Uh, seeing everybody's disposable masks along the, the ground is just oh. disappointing and disheartening because no one wants to clean that up. You can find a trash can and dispose of them. If you don't have a trash can, keep it with you until you find one. It's really not that yeah. difficult. Yeah. I'm not understanding that. Like, you know, what's up? Nobody wants to touch that. We got a pandemic going around. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. Not cool. Hashtag not cool. Exactly. I don't get the hashtags. I'm still learning the hashtags. <laughs> I'm old school, but I'm getting there. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining me here today. As always, I will be doing this again because I love catching up with my travel buddy, sister in crime, Vicki yes, Turbach. Thank you so much for having me. I always enjoy our chats and hopefully everybody got some good information on how yes. the travel is going. And where can people find you, Vic? Um, you can email me at travelbyvicki at gmail.com. You can find me on Facebook under Travel by Vicky or on Instagram also Travel by Vicky. Keep it simple. Awesome. Thank you so much, Wendy. And thank, thank you. you the audience. Yay! Thanks for joining us here today on Talking Travel with Wendy. I have much more content on my website, travelwithwendy.net, and you can also support this channel by becoming a Patreon patron. The links are below. Remember, it's always an adventure when you travel with Wendy.